Hey, Sano Peeps, how's it going? Henry here. I want to go over this interesting case with you guys. It's a rare finding. It's an interesting case. I want to show you my thought process and how I came to the conclusion during the case. All right, let's go. For starters, the exam is on a neonate in the neonatal intensive care unit. Ordering diagnosis was jaundice with a concern for biliary atresia. The exam was pretty unremarkable in concerns for the gallbladder. It was present but contracted. The biliary tree was normal. Common bile duct was present. Now the first images were with the 9 linear, the 9L from the GE machine. The following images were taken with the microcurved or the microconvex array, the 3 to 10. Now when scanning with the C310, I noticed that the left hepatic vein seemed a little larger when compared to the middle hepatic vein. And right next to the distal portion of the left hepatic vein, there was this little cystic structure. Now my first thought was that this could be a cystic dilatation of the biliary system. Maybe like a type of colidocal cyst intrahepatically. But as good practice dictates, every time you see any cystic structure or any structure really, you want to put color Doppler. So here's our color Doppler view of the hepatic veins. The flow is going normal away from the liver or hepatofugal. While again noticing the size discrepancy. Now on this next color Doppler image, you can see pretty clearly that you have the hepatic vein there and the portal vein there. And it appears that there's a communication with the two. So armed with this new knowledge, I began to take more images with the linear probe. This is the 9L. Here's a color Doppler. Now I put the scale all the way up and despite that there's still aliasing which indicates there's high velocity or turbulent flow. Here's a spectral Doppler. Now this flow was pretty phasic and it can be some due to the shunting of the flow from the portal vein to the hepatic vein. But the respirations were pretty high giving this phasic appearance as well. You can see the velocities there is close to 100. I checked the original path of the umbilical vein and there was no flow there. Now remember in fetal circulation the umbilical vein goes up in the abdomen it goes into the liver through here, then meets the left portal vein, then continues from the portal vein to the IVC via the ductus venosus. The remnants of these two channels being the ligamentum teres and the ligamentum venosum. And here's a remnant of the ductus venosus, which becomes the ligamentum venosum. In the case of a umbilical vein line being still present, these two channels will be open until that line is re removed. Now here's a grayscale sweep through the area. Again, you can see the portal vein, the remnant of the umbilical vein. There you can see the flow in the hepatic vein coming through that little fistula. And that's what this turned out to be. This turned out to be a shunt or portal systemic shunt from the left portal vein to the left hepatic vein. Now this may represent a congenital portal systemic venous shunt, which may be what led to the difficult umbilical vein catheter catheterization. This is a B flow of the anomalous connection with the port portal vein to the left and the hepatic vein to the right. In any case, these portal systemic shunts, these congenital portal systemic shunts are rare. They can be divided into intrahepatic and extrahepatic classifications. Clinical presentation sometimes is hypergalactosemia, hyperglycemia, hepatic encephalopathy, can lead to liver failure, hepatopulmonary syndrome, hepatorenal syndrome, and heart failure. The first cases of congenital portal systemic shunts were described by John Abernathy in 1793. And as such, the condition is sometimes called Abernathy syndrome. Well, I hope you found this case interesting and or useful. Take care.